Hey guys, this is Alex with the Tuning School. Today I'm going to talk to you about how to properly input the injector data into your tune file. Okay, here we have a C5 Corvette or a 2003 Chevy Corvette file. Uh, we're going to show you how to take our Infinity fuel injector data, or any fuel injector data for that matter, from an Excel spreadsheet and update your injector data in your tune file. So let's go ahead and get started. First, you want to select engine, then fuel, and you'll see right here, this is your injector data, ranging from flow rate, uh, injector offset, your short pulse limit, your short pulse adder, and minimum injector pulse width. These are some of the uh, sections of the tune file for the injector data that we're going to be updating with new injector data and this is going to help you tremendously in tuning your vehicle properly and efficiently okay so now we're going to open up the injector data in the Excel spreadsheet uh, which should have been uh, provided to you by either Infinity Injectors or any other injector company you bought injectors from so now we're going to open up the data and you see here these are Infinity Injectors, and you're going to select the appropriate uh, ECM or controller you have, which again, if you had watched previous videos, um, you can find under Edit, Calibration Details, and Controller Details. You'll see here, this is a controller P01 or P01, and then you open back up the data. You see down here, scroll down here for you. You'll see E38, E40, E67, E78, P01, and P12. And again, we are P01, so you're going to select the P01 tab. Okay, now we have the proper tab for the proper controller opened up. We're going to update our values. You'll see here, this is your flow rate versus KPA, your offset versus volts versus vacuum or manifold pressure, your short pulse adder, and minimum injector pulse width. So back up the tune file and see what we're going to update first. Again, we're under engine, fuel, and general. First, we're going to update the flow rate versus KPA. Uh, this is one of the most important tables you can update, and this needs to be accurate in order for your car to have accurate fueling at different calculated air masses. Okay, so here you'll have it. You see manifold vacuum, and then here's your injector flow rate versus that manifold vacuum. And when you have no vacuum present, your injector is going to flow the least amount, which is 29 pounds per hour from the factory. And if you have 80 kPa of vacuum present, uh, meaning there's more of a suction, that you're actually, your injector is going to be able to flow more because they're not having to work against any pressure at all. Actually, the, the vacuum is helping them flow more. So let's go ahead and update this table. Open back up your injector data and find your injector flow rate versus KPA, which is right there. And you remember it was going from zero um, vacuum to 80 KPA of vacuum, and it's in pounds per hour. So go ahead and grab this table right here. Right click, copy, open back up your tune file, select this entire table, and paste it in. And you can see here, now at zero kPa or zero manifold vacuum, you're going to have 58.84 pounds per hour of fuel flow, whereas at 80 kPa of vacuum, you're going to have the injectors flowing effectively 64.3 pounds per hour of fuel. Okay, now the next table we're going to update is offset versus volts versus vacuum. You just click on the tab right here, and it will pop up the screen for you. Now, as you can see, this is also referenced in manifold vacuum and is measured in kPa. So it goes from 0 kPa up to 80 kPa, just as our injector flow rate versus manifold vacuum table did. And also now you have another uh, variable thrown into the mix, and that's voltage. And that's ignition voltage, so it will vary from 4.5 volts up to 18 volts. Now, obviously, you're going to spend most of your time somewhere between 12 and 14 volts 
if your ignition system or excuse me your charging system is working properly and charging your battery so we're going to go ahead and update this table because we do have new fresh data for this so open back up your injector data excel spreadsheet and you'll find your injector offset versus volts versus vacuum and again here is your kpa ranging from 0 to 80 that's manifold vacuum and 4.5 volts up to 18 volts so all we need to do here is left click drag select the entire table right click copy and open back up the tune file left click up in the top left corner to select this entire table right click paste and there you have that okay now that you've updated your injector offset versus volts versus vacuum table you're now going to go into the short pulse limit and short pulse adder or short or excuse me pulse correction section of the injector data your short pulse limit um, is there basically to correct for any injector uh, issues at, at lower pulse widths because as you get into larger injectors you're gonna have more of an error at smaller pulse widths so that's why the short pulse adder is there so this means anything under four milliseconds of injector pulse width this short pulse adder table is going to be present to correct for any errors in fuel flow from the injectors so first we're going to make sure we don't need to update the short pulse limit and so by doing so or in order to do so we're going to open up the injector data once more and see if we have a short pulse limit so we're going to scroll from the top and again you have flow rate versus kpa offset versus volts versus vacuum short pulse adder and minimum injector pulse width as you can see here we do not have a short pulse limit so we're going to keep that data stock and move on to the short pulse adder so let's open back up the tune file and open up the short pulse adder and show you what that looks like okay so you can see here uh, we go from zero milliseconds up to four milliseconds and so at that millisecond or of that millisecond of, of pulse width you're going to have an adder which is right here so this is telling the PCM to add this additional amount of fuel pulse width and this is measured in milliseconds so if you're at one millisecond it's going to add 0.2128 milliseconds onto that additional one millisecond of pulse width so it's going to tell the injector to stay open that much longer for that period of time. So we're gonna to need to update this table since we have new new injectors with new data. So let's go ahead and open back up the Excel spreadsheet with the injector data present and select the short pulse adder table, which is on the same scale as what we were looking at before. So left click drag all the way to the end. Right click, copy, open back up your tune file left click right there at the beginning of the table and then paste it in and now you have updated the short pulse adder and it may look kind of strange but don't don't worry uh, it's all in here for a reason okay now we've updated short pulse adder we're going to move on to the minimum injector pulse width so this is the minimum amount of time that your injector can pulse for, which is typically lower with the larger injector you go. So let's open this up. You see here's minimum injector pulse width, and this is based on RPM. So from the factory, our minimum injector pulse width is 1.261 milliseconds. Let's open back up the uh, spreadsheet and see what our injector data has. So let's scroll back over and find minimum injector pulse width right here. And the updated data for the new injectors has 0.375 milliseconds of minimum injector pulse width, meaning these injectors don't need to be open as long to flow the same amount of fuel. So we need to go ahead and definitely update this table. So right click, copy, open back up the tune file, left click, paste, and there you go. So these are the main tables you're going to update when changing your injectors, which are going to help you tremendously in tuning your car 
and getting the car going and continuing on with the tuning process. Okay, thanks for watching you guys. Now you've seen how to properly input injector data into your tune file. Some PCMs do not accept the injector flow rate ta table uh, to be higher than a certain amount. When this happens to you, please see our video on injector scaling to help you get around this issue. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.